Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien with you from the Storage Review Lab back with another video review as we're catching up on some of our past projects. This is the Seagate expansion drive for the Xbox, which you've been lucky enough to obtain for the office. That was very good of you. Yes, I got one on uh, pre-order day and magically out of so many orders, I got two Xbox orders in that I had to cancel one because I didn't want to have to purchase two. Cancel one? The yes. horror of such a, a notion. Anyway, we were lucky enough to get an Xbox on launch day and Seagate provided us with their terabyte expansion card. Now, when we look at this, it uh, looks like a CF Express card with a little plastic dude on top. Because it is. Oh, it is. And so this is the way that Xbox wants you to expand, Microsoft wants you to expand your Xbox high performance storage. Now they'll still support USB drives, but right? only for previous generation games. For all the new uh, or redesigned games, you really or Xbox Series X optimized games, you need to have it, either have it on the internal SSD or on that guy. Okay, so if I don't want the Seagate one, what are my other options? Nothing. Okay, so we're gonna love this thing. It's perfect for what it does, and uh, let's get into the uh, the deck a little bit. When we look at this for our review. We, uh, we went through, we connected it, and we consulted the manual. This is the extent of the manual. See, it was very important that step one because initially I just tried to ram it in the back of the Xbox, <laughs> and because it has a cover on it, it was not able to go in. So I referenced the manual. The <laughs> first step said to remove the cover, and that, it was all perfect for me. That was good. Yeah, that was a critical step, and I like how... Xbox Series X and S both operate very similarly in the way you install this, and then you end up with a green check on number three. Now, Seagate doesn't provide any performance data on this drive on their website, which is a little weird for a storage device. And Microsoft has done a sort of dubious job of explaining the performance profile. In fact, in an interview, they claimed it was the same as the internal SSD, which is almost an impossibility. Yeah, it, it's they should have stayed with the phrasing of identical, uh, maybe identical experience, because yeah. we know the internal SSD from their initial claims is 2.4 gigabytes a second raw performance, and a CF Express card, no matter how fast, generally will top out at under two gigs a or two gigabytes per second right. with supporting two lanes of NVMe. And you look at the, um, this kind of goes into pricing. If you look at the Xbox Series X uh, expansion card, and it's like, okay, well, the one terabyte card is really expensive. It's not that com it's not that expensive compared to actual CF Express cards. It's right. actually almost four times less for the amount of capacity that you get. Well, you're also going to get four times less performance, perhaps. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But yes. a traditional CF Express card is typically designed for high-end photography use cases. We've looked at those cards before. And many of them are rated at something like 1700, 1750 megabytes per second read. That's not the case here. Yeah, and this loops back to the performance claims of being identical to the internal SSD. This guy, it's it's fast, but I mean, it's good for like 740 megabytes a second read and three to 400 on the right side. Right. So we formatted the drive and tested it on a uh, on a PC to get these numbers. But the thing is. If you used a USB drive like a X5 is popular from Samsung, the numbers wouldn't be. It'd actually be better. Faster on write, slower on read. No, there are, um, a lot of those devices will top out around one gigabyte per second. So you're in, you're in a range where this card is slower than some of the existing external options that are out there, but you're not limited to putting games onto it because it's not supported not fast enough. It's just it's locked out. Right, so the, the system lockout is part of the problem, right? Or opportunity, I suppose, if you're Seagate, because you've got a little firmware identifier on there or formatted just the way the Xbox wants it, it'll see it and it'll match up and use its velocity greatness to, to mush together with the, the, uh, the external card. But I think what Microsoft is after on this is they're really looking for a guaranteed certified experience. And there is a wide variability when you look at, um, let's say, SD cards in the market. Sure. But you don't really find that on the CF Express card slot. Uh, and actually, any comparable you'd be finding is going to be much more premium than this, but also at a higher price. Right. I realized I said X5. I was thinking the T5, the SATA version, which would still offer a 
pretty good performance profile over USB on this thing. Oh, yeah, because they're a USB 3.2, not uh, the BY2 well, standard that goes up to 2 gigabytes a second. Right. But you're in the range where it's going to max out roughly at 1 gig a second read, 1 gig a second write, and have a pretty good uh, performance profile. And you just can't use that on the new Xbox. So, All right, well, let's slam this guy in and, and look at the, uh, the user experience a little bit. Should I consult the manual again? No, I think all you have to do is switch over to the Xbox. Okay, let's do that. So when we think about how this works, you just drop it in. What are we looking at here? So this, oh, hey, you got an Xbox 360. Yeah, Man, I, what a rube. You got a launch day 360. Yeah. <laughs> I don't exactly know where that name is coming from because this thing is literally just labeled Xbox yeah. in the system name. Yeah, but, you got screwed bad, well, man. We'll put the card in, and it takes, I think it's like six or seven seconds to uh, Right, this is checking recognize. the compatibility, yes. making sure you paid for the firmware. And you get to see that it's just called the storage expansion card. Okay. And you get to view contents, you can format it, rename it, uh, but there's there's no branding on it. There's nothing that says like it's the uh, Seagate card. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I guess that paves the way for uh, Lexar, WD, Samsung, SanDisk, whoever wants to go through the certification process one day to, yeah, no, to make it Yeah, what is interesting is we did, since we do have CF Express cards around the office, we can put one in and... Um, yeah, let's see what happens here when you when you switch it. All right, so you just dropped in the Lexar guy. Let's see what it does. And uh, you get this warning message, use an Xbox storage expansion card. So Have you tried reporting a problem? Uh, I could try, but it'll probably flag my account. <laughs> yeah, um, it's your Xbox 360 is toast. Yes, but it really comes down to you're looking at a guaranteed... Uh, yeah, okay. yeah I'm not moving. Get out of here, all right. It's looking for a guaranteed experience, and maybe it's a self-preservation thing because our 128 gig Lexar card is roughly the same price as the one terabyte Seagate card, uh, which goes back to the yeah, it's a it's a fairly expensive um, expansion option. I mean, it's not necessarily half, but close to half the cost of the actually yeah, it's half the cost of Xbox Series X. Pretty much, yeah. And and if you look at any of the people that were crazy enough to crack open the uh, Seagate drive. It's just a couple of NAND packs and a controller with some heat shielding. There's not a ton going on yeah. in there. Um, so the price should be reasonable. And like you said, if if you want to have the experience, especially a portable experience, if you're going to take this out, throw it in your pocket, your backpack or whatever, it's smaller, it's a little bit easier. It's a, if you get rid of the cable, it's a little bit cleaner on your system. I, I guess there's some upsides. Yeah, although, I mean... I remember the days of like carrying around my GameCube and moving it between locations. The platforms have gotten a little bit heavier. The ha the carrying handle's been removed, and these days almost everyone has their own Xbox, unless you were not in the pre-order uh, group that got access to them. Uh, but I think we're so lucky to cancel a second pre-order, right? Yeah. So there's. I mean, there are some advantages of this particular type of card form factor, although uh, Sony, for example, has gone to just normal M.2 SSD and it requires a little more tool interaction. This is a fairly seamless insertion and you're ready to go. All right. So that I mean, that's the gist of it, right? This thing's dead simple to drop in and use. It's relatively cost affordable for a terabyte and it's just going to work. Now, when you go through the marketing um I don't want to say it's propaganda, but it's not exactly truthful to say it's as fast as the internal SSD because it's just not. Um, and it's there are external options that would have been equally as fast, if not much faster, depending on the interface used. So you've got a trade off here with the Xbox on simplicity versus overall performance. And I think gamers will ultimately be relatively happy with this card if they yeah, get it. Yeah, it's, it's aimed to offer the exact same experience. And if you just say, okay, it's offering like identical experience, there's no problem. It's just, it, it's the phrasing of the wording where it says offers identical performance, which right. storage guys were looking at like, oh, okay, one number is this, one number is that. It's obviously not matching up, but for experience, it's going to match it. All right, there you have it. That concludes our video review with It's Good Enough and It's Pretty Simple. And it's the only option. There's that too. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in.